Okay, so we've got our graph here. We've just done our ANOVA analyses. Um, let's just relabel this graph now to reflect, reflect an experiment that might have taken place. These could be concentrations, for instance, of a treatment. This could be zero or control. This could be 50 micromolar and 100 micromolar. So I'm going to relabel this and call it a drug. And we're going to say it's in micromolar. Just a little hint, if you didn't know this, to get the micron sign on a PC keyboard, you just press the Alt button. And then on the number keys on the far right hand side, you type 0181. So Alt 0181. Release the Alt button, and then you get a micron sign. In Prism, you can insert the micron by simply going up to this top menu here where it says Right, choosing the Insert a Greek, Math, European, or Winding character, and choosing the micron from here. And it inserts its own little micron. But if you didn't know the shortcut, Alt 0181 is quite a useful one to remember. Anyway, so we've now got drugs and micromoles. We go to our experiment. This is no longer control. This is naught. This is now 50 micromole. This is 100 micromole. And our graph now reflects the drug in micromoles. Let's just say we repeated this experiment, but this time we repeated it in the presence of an inhibitor that might inhibit whatever it is we're measuring in the result here. So this would be a slightly more complicated graph. It would be a graph where we have 0 plus and minus inhibitor, 50 plus and minus inhibitor, and 100 plus and minus inhibitor. So let's go to the new and create a new graph and table for this. So click on new table and graph. And this time, instead of being a column where we're choosing just a standard column, it's going to be a grouped analysis. So we're, this time we're going to choose a graph, and it's got a little picture here showing a white and a black bar next to each other in a group. And that, of course, could be your 0, 50, and 100 micromolar with and without your inhibitor. So we're going to choose that as our graph. And down the bottom here, it's asking us now how we're going to enter these data. We're going to have six replicates showing mean and let's show standard deviation as well and we're going to enter the data this way so we've chosen six replicates with mean and standard deviation and we create create now the table looks very different to the previous table you can see we've got this list of things called titles and then here we've got A and this is all group A and we've got here this is all group B so we've got three sets of groups we've got control or zero we've got 50 and we've got 100 and we've got treatment with and without a drug with or without an inhibitor you might just jump straight in here and go oh that's easy I'm going to put group A in here group B and B and group C in the third one well that would be incorrect in the way that the analysis needs to take place so now where you've previously put in these data 0, 50 and 100 in columns this time we're going to put 0, 50 and 100 into rows so if you go to the new thing which is called data3, I'm going to call that experiment2 and in brackets inhib. This time this is our control, this is our 50 and this is our 100. So one, the rows 1, 2 and 3 are 0, 50 and 100. And it's these rows here into which you put your data. Well, I'm going to cheat because we've already got some data from this experiment. You wouldn't normally do this. In fact, it's a, a big no-no unless you carry out the experiment at the same time. But I'm going to highlight these data here, right-click and choose Copy. I'm actually doing this to demonstrate another good function of PRISM. For, you may have these data in Excel already in columns. This is the way you've, uh, you've got your data off the plate reader or you've got your data off a densitometry software or whatever. And it's all in nice little columns. We want them in rows. So we can just click on the top square, right click and choose paste transpose and it conveniently converts rows into columns for us and columns into rows. So we click paste transpose and it's transposed the data. This is all group A, this is all group B and this is all group C from the previous graph. And if you don't believe me, there's experiment 1 and this is the newly created graph for experiment 2. The three sets of data look pretty much the same, the differences are the same, the means and the standard deviations are the same, so that's really good news, nice and easy, copy and paste. Um, of course this graph looks terrible, so we'll leave it as it is at the moment and we'll come back to that in a second. I'm just going to enter some random numbers as if I've added an inhibitor to these, I've no idea what I'm measuring here, I'm just going to add some numbers, so the inhibitor inhibits whatever it is that we've measured. 
So there we are, there's some numbers. Um, and there we have a load of numbers. So now we can look at our new newly formed graph. And you've got here legend, legend, and a whole load of numbers. It's written legend, legend, because I haven't told it what I've done. So I go back up to the inhibitor. Data set B is going to be the inhibitor, let's say at 100 micromolar. And data set A is going to be my control. So we go back to our graph, and now we've got our expression experiment to inhib, so I'll get rid of that. Our y-axis title, which is our uh, result in units, whatever that result may be, and we'll move that out a little bit. Down the bottom here we've got x title, so I'm just going to delete that for the moment, because I don't like the way these data are formatted. I, I want to be able to compare, like our little example showed us, I want to be able to compare zero with and without inhibitor and see it on the screen a little bit better than this. So I can choose the way these data are expressed. So I can double click in the middle here and up in the options data sets on graph, click on here and you can see I've got my two data sets, my control and my inhibitor. And down here you can see it says relation of selected data set with the previous one. At the moment it's grouped, so it's grouping all of the inhibitor data together. I want it interleaved with the previous group, the control group. So I can choose interleaved. Press OK. And now what it's done is it's put my data next to each other. I've got all my zero treated data with control and inhibitor, my 50 with control and inhibitor, and my 100 with control and inhibitor. So just going back to that dialog box, I could choose superimposed. Now it's a bit daft because it's blocking out the other data. So you can decide what you want to do and how you want to show it. Um, stacked is an interesting one. You see quite a lot of data like this in the literature where you show the full range with the reduction caused by an inhibitor. I don't want that. I don't like the look of that in this occasion. So I'm going to go back and choose interleaved. And now I've got my data interleaved. I don't much like the colors, so I'm just going to change them myself. I'm just going to double click again, change this to a white, press OK, double click on this one. Uh, I like the hatched fill, so I'm going to put a hatched fill on this one and leave it like that. So I've got, now got my control and my inhibitor data. Some people like to move their legend blobs into the middle there just for clarity. It makes it look quite neat. And now I can basically format this graph the way I want it to look. So for instance I'm going to double click on the x-axis and I'm going to make the numbering horizontal. That looked quite nice. I like the look of that. I may actually want to get rid of this little tick as well because that little tick doesn't really tell me very much. So for the purpose of this I'm going to get rid of that by choosing none. Now I've just got 0, 50 and 100. I've lost my label here you've noticed so um, I deleted it previously rather prematurely without thinking about it so if I go in here I should be able to add a label quite nice um, x-axis um, label so to show the x-axis label we go to change axis titles and you've got show axis title for x put that back again now it says x title so I can move him down, double click on him, and this can be our drug in micromolars. So there we are, drug in micromolars across the bottom, result, units up the left, and we've got control and inhibitor. Let's move them up a little bit. Um, I think these again, like our previous graph where we decided these lines are a bit thick, let's just double click on them, select all data, make our borders thinner, make our error bars thinner, have our error bars going both ways and click OK. Um, because our error bar here is going below the um, x-axis, it's, it's automatically scaled it now so it goes down to minus 5. I can click on the y-axis, change the automatic to off and have this on 0. And now my data look a lot tidier. Something else that you'd often see in, in the literature is these bars are closer together. I quite like them closer together so you can double click again on the area, go to data sets on graph and then the graph settings option you've got the space between bars 50% and additional space between groups so I can change the space between bars to 10% of the column width leave that at 50% and now they look a bit closer together and they look a bit smarter. 
Um, so now we've got these data, um, I'll stop this here and we'll move on to the analysis on the next tutorial.